Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Nina Ribena's Art Journal Prompts and More. It's week two of this month's Inspired by Prompt um, and today's challenge is portraits, faces. Um, and I don't want anybody freaking out over this. Um, it doesn't have to be anything, you know, complicated or too difficult if you don't want it to be. These are two pieces here by um, Pablo Picasso. These are just a um, couple of pieces of artwork that I picked up when I was on holiday in Spain. You can do something quirky like this um, or you can do as I have done and take um, a portrait and try and reproduce it and I have found this to be a really really useful exercise this week so your um, options this week are um, Pablo Picasso Gustav Klimt again because Gustav Klimt I know we did this last week with um, symbols and shapes but Klimt is also famous for doing portraits um, somebody who's really really popular at the moment is Frida Kahlo um, you will find heaps of inspiration with Frida Kahlo on um, Pinterest and YouTube um, and then finally Amadeo Medigliani and that's who I have based my piece on now I'm going to um, give you a little tip here which I think you will find really really useful um, if you want to do a face a proper portrait um, rather than something quirky like this go and watch a couple of videos first a tartan taz tanya barnes um, tartan taz creates on youtube has got a fantastic um, beginners tutorial for drawing faces and it teaches you all about placement and how far down the eye should go the nose the mouth and it's just really really useful I watched Tanya's video, oh gosh, 12, 18 months ago, I think she um, uploaded it and did my first ever face based on Tanya's video. Um, I have only ever drawn stickmen. I don't draw. It's a real fear of mine. Anybody who knows me well knows that I don't do faces because I'm absolutely terrified of doing them. So, you know, if this at the moment is filling you with fear, I, I get it. I absolutely get it. But let me just show you. This was um, the first face I ever draw, uh, I ever drew um, after watching Tanya's video. And, you know, I know it's, it's not the best. The eyes are way too big but you know to, for me to have produced something like this after watching a video once um, was just absolutely amazing you know she talks about shading as I say sort of where to put the eyes where to put the nose the the lips etc and I'm going to leave the link to that video in the description box below um, but let me just show you this is the piece that I have created this week and as I say um, it is a reproduction of um, Medigli on his wife who is Jean Hubertant I think um, I think you pronounce it hang on let me just find Hubertin here we go Jean um, Jean Hubertin I, my, my French pronunciation is absolutely terrible so that is the um, picture that uh, sorry I've got a terrible glare from um, my laptop from the lights above so that is the picture um, that I have based um, my piece on and it's not exactly the same it's not completely accurate but I am absolutely thrilled to bits um, with this here and I've found it a really really useful exercise so I'm going to show you um, my video now and I'm going to do a voiceover and I'll catch you at the end now I've had a good look at the picture that I'm using for reference and I've drawn myself a few guidelines and guide marks I drew two dots so that I knew where the face was going to go and then I've drawn a horizontal line in the bottom um, section of the page as well um, so that I know where my shoulders um, need to go. Now in Tanya's video she talks about the placement of the eyes being halfway down the face um, and also having an even space in the middle and um, the same size as both eyes as well so again I've drawn myself some dots so that um, you know I know where to put them um, and I'm trying to follow the shape of the eyes in the picture and of course I'm doing this in pencil um, so that I can make alterations along the way I've got my handy dandy eraser that um, I, you'll see me use quite a quite a lot and I'm just trying to copy the shapes in the picture 
The lips in the Medigliani picture are quite low down on the face and they're also very thin as well. So I'm just having a look at the placement um, and just trying to draw those in accordingly. Um, and the nose is very elongated on my lady as well. Um, so I'm just trying to, again, look at the picture and try and make it as accurate as I can get it. Now this is where the information that Tani gives in her video comes in handy again because she talks about um, the placement of, of the, the bridge of the nose being in line with the, um, with the eyebrows as well. Um, and so I'm just joining mine up. And then I want to draw my hairline as well. So again, I've sort of looked at the, the shape on the, uh, the, the, the portrait that I'm following. And just I, I just draw myself some guidelines. And again, I'm tweaking this with my pencil and um, erasing the bits that I don't want until I get a hairline shape um, that I'm happy with. The hairline, of course, doesn't sit directly on top of the head. So I'm just drawing my hairline as well um, and then rubbing out the areas that I don't want so that it just makes my face look more realistic. I'm altering my shoulders because they're not quite broad enough so again because I've just used a pencil I can just tweak it and um, rub out the bits that I don't want and I just keep playing until I you know get the proportions um, as accurate as I you know feel they need to be. I feel that the face isn't quite long um, enough so again I'm altering this and I end up rubbing out the lips and the nose as well um, and just trying to get this more in proportion. I'm just fiddling around with the hair again and putting in a few details just to help me visualise how it's going to look. Moving on to the eyes. The eyes in the portrait are almond shaped and so I'm just taking my time and using my eraser um, just to try and get that shape um, and also making sure that the eyes are symmetrical and in proportion and I just keep fiddling and fiddling and fiddling until I'm happy with the way that they look. I'm just adding the hint of an ear to the right hand side and then I'm pretty much ready to start colouring my page. I'm using Neo Colour 2 water soluble oil pastels to colour my page and the background is very multi-tonal and I've picked out colours that resemble the colours that are in the background of my portrait and I start off by just scribbling a few colours on and then I blend these with a damp baby wipe um, and I just keep building the layers until I'm happy with the overall colour.
Now I find it easier to blend these with my finger. I just find that I've got more control, but in the smaller areas um, on the face, I do actually use a blending stump. And as I've said, I'm just adding more and more colors. I start off with a light layer and I'm just building um, those layers to get that depth of color. I'm just using a black neo color now just to outline my portrait just to sort of add some differentiation between the background and the actual um, face. And then again using five or six different colors to build up the layers and complete my background on the left hand side. Now again, the hair is multi-tonal, so I've picked out two or three different shades of brown. Um, I've also picked out a black and a white as well. I'm using the black to darken it and the white to add some highlights. And I just keep building those layers until I get a color that I'm happy with. Now the shading of the face is another area that um, was tricky for me. Um, so I start off light, I'm using various shades of um, lighter brown um, and also some skin tone colors as well, just to try and build up the layers. I've looked at the portrait as well, just to see where the areas of shading are. And I'm just trying to emulate that. So, you know, adding shading underneath the eyes, um, around the neck, uh, and I just keep slowly, slowly building those layers. You'll also notice that I'm using the darker colors around the outside of the face um, and the white and the more skin tone colors in the middle of the face. Um, and building up those layers very, very gradually as well, just so that I don't end up with anything too dark. Remember that you can always add more, but once you've put it down, it's very difficult to take it away. And I'm using a mixture here of my finger, I'm using that uh, damp baby wipe to blend, but also a blending tool as well, just to um, blend the more fiddly areas around the eyes and the nostrils. And I'm just rubbing my blending stump on a piece of cut and dry 
dry paper here and that's just to get rid of any colour that might have been on the blending stump so that I don't end up um, contaminating the colours that I'm working with. Now I've sharpened the black Neo Color with a metal pencil sharpener just so that I can add fine details to the eyes. Then again, I'm going gently here, not pressing too hard, and I'm using a blending stump just to smudge out those details. So here's my finished portrait and I'm really pleased with it. This has taken me so far out of my comfort zone this this week um, but I'm so glad that I've done it and I know that you know lots of you in the group can do it too. Um, I mean some of you are just you know far far better artists than than I will, will ever be um, but a really really useful exercise. So just to recap um, the challenge this week is portraits um, and we're using using four different artists this week as reference. We're using Amadeo Medigliani, which is what I've based my portrait on, Gustav Klimt again, um, Pablo Picasso and Frida Kahlo. So again, plenty of options. Um, and just to recap, if you want to do something more simplistic, then, you know, this 
Picasso piece is maybe the way to go. You can either um, do a reproduction of a portrait like I've done or just, you know, use a piece for inspiration and do your own take on it. It really is entirely up to you this week. So I look forward to seeing what everybody comes up with. Um, last week was just full of so many wonderful pieces of artwork in the group. It was just an absolute joy to watch. So I'm really excited to see what everybody decides to do this week. So if you enjoyed this and you like what I've done here, as always, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. Do let me know what you think in the comments below and take care, everyone. I'll see you all again soon. Bye for now.